school. But I have somebody special who did not stand up because he's my elder brother, but also my board boss here, Mr. David Sengel. We studied together at Oshimzi and he was my boss. He's my boss here. So I, I don't say much about him. <laughs> Uh, allow me to also introduce to you this. I don't know whether they are here. I have my colleagues I worked with at MOOPS. One of them is Professor Laura Orobia. Professor Laura Orobia is the, the Associate Dean of the Faculty of Graduate Studies and Research at McKinley University Business School. She is the only woman professor in that school. You can imagine. I was also expecting Professor Haji Twahakawase. I don't know whether he's here. Okay, he was supposed to be here. Professor Haji Twahakawase is the deputy particular of Uganda. I also have Dr. Joshua Mgambwa. Where is Dr. Joshua Mgambwa? Yes, Dr. Joshua Mgambwa is the Dean of the Faculty of Management and Public Policy at McKinley University Business School. He is my colleague. Dr. Mgambwa, I hope you came with somebody. Did you come, Sarah? Okay. All right. I also expected my good friends, I don't know where they are here. Is Mr. Mujuk around? He's not here. Mujuka, Mujuka Patrick and, and, and Sevenya, they, they had promised that they would be here. All right. To introduce to you also, Mr. Kawaya David and wife and child. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. David is the chief administrative officer how he's a great friend in our midst also is mr and mrs Ray edwards those are friends they are neighbors they uh, they he has a school called musega preparatory school the the two mkumba university staff those of you who know mr chigundu our our former Eh? Welfare. Mr. Chigun is this, the brother of Mrs. Rule. So there you are. I wish to introduce to you also my former employer, the person who made me. I don't know. Has he come, Mr. Seko? Is there? I wish to introduce Haji Musa Sewaba. Where is Haji Musa Sewaba? He's not yet here. Uh, Haji Sewaba and Haji Sajat Sera Sewaba, they are not yet here, but they are. Apple of Agua schools, I read they are a conglomerate of schools, over 10. These schools give very good service to the community. Uh, these schools have over 11,000 children, you can imagine. They employ over 850 employees. This year, they are going to sit about 1,400 students at PLE. Dr. Dalton, that is your catch 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 what catchment area lastly allow me to introduce to my family albert and the jb you like stand up you, you come here for the These two young men are my brothers. We are 11 children in a family. Our father says he's the goal, he's the referee. <laughs> uh, 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 the mother is the what now? Coach? <laughs> but these are the two that have been able to come. This is Albert Mukasa. He's a CPA. He has a Bachelor of Commerce from McKay University and works with the Commercial Bank of Africa. It's, it's now what? 
NCBA. NCBA. He's the manager in charge of risk. This young man here is a, a teacher by profession, but turned a banker. He's called Mayanja John Baptist. Uh, now he works with the Forex Bureau in Kampala. You can now see. My children, you can come here. You're not going to give speeches, but you're going to tell the people your name, uh, your qualification, and where you are. That's all. Then I give my you know, direction. You can line up in your order. Uh huh. So come, tell, tell the people your name, uh, where you studied and where. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Betty Nasaka Kasekende. I studied at Makere University. I'm currently the mental health supervisor in Strong Minds Uganda. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Bale Edward Kasekende. I studied at MOOCs. Uh, currently, I'm working with an NGO called Muju, uh, which I'm in This one, this one, this one gave me a, a grandson. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Mujuzi, a second day. I hold a bachelor's in accounting and finance at uh, Chambogo University. I currently work with a recruitment company called uh, London Group, London Recruitment Group, as a compliance officer. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm very glad to be in the presence of us. Great academia. My name is Nakuya Niona Kasekende. Um, I studied at Chambogo University and attained a bachelor's in demography and reproductive health. And I work at Action for Real Women's Empowerment, which is an government organization um, and it's located in Wakiso. I'm also pursuing a master's degree in public health. And um, yes, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Namazi Nancy Kasekende. Speak louder. <laughs> My name is Namazi Nancy Kasekende. I'm 20 years old. <laughs> I'm the second last born, and I'm in year one, Shambogo University, doing bachelor's in vocational studies, art and design with education. There is one last one who is not here, he's in senior four. A, a boy, so good. God gave us three and the three boys, three girls. Now, the last person I wish to introduce to you is my better half. Please come. Hey. I was telling Martha last time, where is Martha, my deputy? I was telling Martha, my deputy, that I have a beautiful wife. And she said, are you sure? <laughs> and I told her, yes, Martha. Now, can you see? Uh, this, this young lady is, uh, you can actually quote me that south of Sahara Desert and north of River Limpopo, you cannot find a lady as beautiful as her. <laughs> But I know when I say this, Professor Mandy, my PhD students, be careful. Don't quote, don't say like I've said. Professor Mandy will say, according to who? Tell him. <laughs> Tell him, according to Kaseke in the 2022, 30th, 30th September, she's. All right, you can go back. Now to my, to my inaugural lecture. The topic tonight is 
transcending barriers uh, to academic and professional excellence, leveraging strength-based approaches. I explained briefly what is to transcend. Everybody knows what to transcend is, is to go beyond. Uh, barriers are those challenges that you face. And uh, each of us would like to, to be an academic, to, be, to excel in our performance. These, these people who, who manage this thing. Thanks. Okay, the, uh, the topic you have understood. In your effort to excel, you have to take certain actions. As you take these actions, to excel. You have confused me, my, 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 I want. No, 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 okay. Uh, in, in our endeavor to excel, we have to take certain actions. But as you take those actions, on the way you find barriers, you find challenges. But we are saying, what do you do with those challenges? There are several things you can do. But tonight, we'd like to look at only those that are strength-based. What are those strength-based approaches one can take? One can leverage. To leverage is to take, uh, to take, uh, um, take maximum advantage of, that is to leverage. So we are saying you want to excel at your business, at your career, you have to take actions, but on the way you find challenges. So you should be able to leverage, to take maximum action of certain strength-based approaches so that you do excel. Okay. Uh, I would like to give you a little bit a little bit of my career. Professor Mande has talked about me. After primary seven in 1979, I joined the Busubi Teachers College. I was not able to join Mikana Secondary School simply because I did not have money to take me there. My father was a teacher, did not have the money. And so he said, Francis, you're not going to Michiana Secondary School. My late grandfather, the late Honorable Beso Mulondo, told my father, I think let's take this boy to Busubis Teachers College, where they don't pay money. Busubis was, was a TTC. I went to Busubis. I studied for four complete years and completed in 1983 as a grade two teacher. I was posted to a school called Mitiana Public School. I taught as a teacher in the class. One and a half years later, that's 1985, I went to a grade three teachers college in Mubende Teachers College, which is now NTC Mubende. I completed in 1987 with a grade three teachers certificate. I was posted to a small school still in Mitiana called Chinda Primary School, where we have uh, near the church, near the Catholic Cathedral. I didn't work there for much time. Uh, a school called the uh, Seventh Day Adventist. Uh, 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 Busim, the Seventh Day Adventist School, took me as a deputy head teacher. You can see now, hmm? from teacher to what? Deputy. I became a deputy head teacher at Busimbi Primary School. It was an Adventist school. Now, Mr. Ziwa here is there. Mr. Ziwa, please stand up for recognition. Came from, Mr. Ziwa is an Adventist, but he came and took me from an Adventist school and took me to Nabingo St. Mary's boarding school. That's when I came to Kampala also. I don't know whether Nabingo is in Kampala. <laughs> uh, I was immediately given uh, as a, a teacher of social studies in P7 at St. Mary's boarding school, Nabingo. That is 1988. I taught 90, 91, 92, 93, 94. I said, I should go for a diploma. I went to the Institute of Teacher Education, Chambogo, to become a grade five teacher with a diploma. I studied for two years at Chambogo. When I came back with my diploma, 
I told Mr. Senkoto, you don't know Mr. Senkoto. Senkoto is there. Please stand up, please. Mr. Senkoto is the director of human resources in Sapporo Hawa Schools. I told Mr. Senkoto that I want one day to head an institution like Chambogo University. He said, good luck. That's what he told me. Uh, that was 1996. 97, I was made a deputy head teacher of St. Mary's Boarding School, Nabingo. Uh, 98, 97 December, my other friend called Patrick Mukasa, he's there, Mr. Mukasa Patrick, came for me from St. Mary's and told me there are these schools called Sapporo Kakwa Schools. One of them is Chengera Parent School. They have constructed another school at Sapporo Kakwa Road Primary School. They want a head teacher. Can you come here at Chengera so that I go to Sapporo? <laughs> I don't know why he did not let me go to the other school. <laughs> but that is it. I said, yes, let's go. I went for an interview. It was a three-month interview. I, Patrick, and the director called Haji Sawava Musa. I don't know. He had promised to come. He has sent a representative, Farouk. Would you like to stand up? Is that Farouk? Abib, okay, Abib. Abib is the son of the day. So I, it was a three-man interview. What I remember in the interview is we were, talk, we were speaking in Uganda. All of a sudden, Haji Sawava said, now it's speak English. <laughs> As if I do not know how to speak. <laughs> we spoke in English. The question he asked me was, how much money do you earn at St. Mary's as a, as a deputy teacher? I haven't told you, I hadn't told you that I was earning 70,000 shillings per month, but the director would pay us only for three months. And that's, so my salary was 210,000 for the whole term. What was funny, that director would pay you that money at the beginning of the term. And then you suffer. <laughs> so I told the Haji Sawaba, I earned 210. Mind my words, eh? I earned 210,000. Then he said, okay, I'm going to increase your salary by 90,000. I'm going to give you 300,000 per month. I, I, I started sweating. <laughs> you can imagine the increase there. And I left, I left, I went to Chengera Parents as a head teacher in 1998 and 99. 99 in third term, the directors opened another school at Sapro Hagwa Mengo. And they wanted the head teacher there. Before they got one, they said, now Francis, that is Haji Sawa. I'm going to make you head teacher of these two schools. I became the first person in Uganda to head <laughs> two schools. Is there one in this audience? There is none. Even if you are there, don't put it. <laughs> <laughs> so I headed the schools. Haji Sawa bought me a new, I, it, according to me, it was a, new, a brand new car. The San Lauri. Eh? I started driving in San Lauri in 1999. Since then, I have never stepped on the soil. I drive. <laughs> <laughs> but that was Haji Sawaba Musa. Uh, then, two years later, 2000, uh, I was taken to head Sapro Kagwab, Old Kampala, uh, where I spent over seven years, up to 2000, and, and uh, maybe seven. I haven't told you that. In between, I asked my director to allow me go for a bachelor's degree. He gave me one condition, do not go for a full-time bachelor's degree. Just go for distance, in service. I had to go for in service. We started with my friend, Mr. Senkoto, and graduated in 2002. 2003, I told Hajisaba, I want to go and study a master's in education administration. He said, no, Francis. You have had enough of education. <laughs> grade two, grade three, diploma, bachelor's. What do you want with education? He told me, can you now go for an MBA? He had just graduated with an MBA in finance and accounting. I told him, I don't know finance and accounting. He told me there is an MBA HR. I went for that option at MOOPS, 2003, 2005, I graduated and came back. 
but you know, when I went to MOOCs, I was a, I was a headmaster. One of my, my parents was the, the head of department of human resource at MOOCs. She had, she had a kid, God bless her, she, she, she died recently. She told me, Francis, why don't you come and join us as MOOCs? So I'm very sorry, Haji Sawaba, I left him. <laughs> I went to MOOCs as a lecturer, and that's where I got the opportunity uh, to study a PhD. That year, I think it was 2011, Professor Balunua did like what Dr. Dalton, you are doing to Mkumba, to staff development. Professor Balunua said, I want two, two, two academic staff from each department to go for a PhD at Makerere. There were 16 departments, that is 32 people. I was the first register. Because I wanted the PhD. I had an opportunity to go to Australia to do a PhD, but they said, come with your wife and the children who are below 14 years. You see, the, you see those people, are they? Could I, go? <laughs> I couldn't go. So I took a, a decision to go to Makerere University, which was near. Uh, and uh, in three years' time, I completed my PhD. I started in 2011, December. By 2014, December, I was defending my PhD. In 2015, I graduated. Among the 32, I can tell you, I was the only one who graduated with that PhD in three years. The others graduated later, others dropped out. That is my academic career. In terms of professional development, you have seen. I was a senior, senior lecturer. I, before I came to Nkumba, I was a senior lecturer. When I came here, I, I, actually, before I came to Nkumba, I had already submitted my papers for associate professorship at MOOCs. They were on the pipeline. Then an opportunity came. I had two opportunities. One, Professor Tuakawase said, can you come, Francis, and become the deputy vice chancellor of Mtesa One University? Then my brother, Tonight, I'm going to report you to the BOTs. My brother, Mr. Sengendo, said, can you come to Nkumba and become the, uh, the, the uh, university secretary? The, both, both jobs were lucrative. At, 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 at Mutesa, they were giving me a vehicle. Hmm? <laughs> Here in Nkumba, they said, we are giving you a chauffeur-driven vehicle. <sighs> uh, it was perturbed. I went to my mentor. He's called Dr. Nkata the director, executive director of UMI said, Dr. Ankata, what can I do? Should I go Nkumba? Should I go Mutesa one? Ankata said, no, go to Nkumba. I be <laughs> Once you become a US, you are going to get that, those management uh, qualities that will help you to, to run an institution. So here I am at Nkumba. But remember, I had promised my friend, Mr. Senkoto, that I want to head an institution one day, like Chambogo. Last week, last week, Professor Judulwega was in Tanzania. <laughs> <laughs> he went to Dar es Salaam for a whole week. And he said, now, Francis, So, Mr. Sengoto, I have fulfilled my promise. <laughs> I have headed an institution as big as, but for one week at least. <laughs> okay, so that's my story. Uh, uh, that's my story. Uh, uh, now, mm. according to the topic, if you want to excel in academics, in business, in your career, wherever you are, there are outcomes to excellence. Once you excel, you are likely to improve productivity, you are likely to improve your quality performance, you also reduce wastage of resources, but most of all, you gain recognition. Recognition is very key. 
you can see, even Chinua Achebe said, when a child washes her hands, his hands, what does he do? Who did Chinua Achebe? When a child washes his hands, then what? He starts eating with elders at the table. I have left there. I am now, actually, I'm this side now. <laughs> I have started eating with these elders at the table simply because I have done what? Please, once you excel in whatever you do, you actually get recognized and that's again. But there are several precursors for you to excel in whatever you want to do. Your attitude matters a lot. The behavior to deliver also matters. Uh, you also have to get the skill sets on what you want to do. Similarly, you need to get resources. You, you have listened to my story, the resources were not that good. But that was it. The story I'm telling, each of you has passed through. It's similar to mine, but I'm just putting it in, in writing. You have to get a clear understanding of the high performance outcome and impact. If you have those, then you'll be able to excel. Excelling is like, you guys doing research by PhD students. The precursors are like a drum. When you drum like this, then somebody dances. The type of drum you, the type of sound that comes out of the drum determines the type of dancing. If it is, if it is back simba, then the dance is back simba. If it is la la karaka, then the dance is but even the intensity of the drumming determines the intensity of the dancing. So that's a clear understanding of the high performance outcome. If you want high performance, then do something here. But all I'm saying, as you endeavor to do that, some challenges come along the way. And these are the probable barriers that I want to talk about. One of them is inability to manage time. You might be able to, you might fail to set your goals. Somebody said, should I go here? Should I go there? Remember when I went, when they said, do you go Mutesa one? Do you go Ngumba? I was, I was, <laughs> so I took, I had to go somewhere to get uh, advice. Failure to make priorities. Some people are, are unmotivated to attend to the task. We have that big one, child care responsibilities at home. These, these girls you saw here, they, 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 they let me down. I should have been an Australian now. <laughs> but they, 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 are they innocent? No, they should, they should pay for failing, for failing me to go to Australia. Those responsibilities can make you fail to do what you want to do. And also financial constraints. They are a barrier to excelling in business, in the academics, and in your profession. Now, what is the source of all this? There is what we call the deficit model of thinking, the deficit orientation, the negative mode of thinking. In this model, the assumption is that the world is full of obstacles. You want to start a business, then you say, but now, you are an A, but now, but now, you want to start studying, then you say, where shall I get the money? You want to go to upgrade, but my director, will he allow me? We think that the world is full of obstacles and to succeed is to overcome as many of these obstacles as possible. That is the negative mode of thinking. That is the deficit mode of thinking which we have. And this model is so powerful that it popularized the institutionalization of the industrial revolution. In Europe, most of us studied history. Europe, I've been there once, but those who have been there, Professor Matt, they know the weather, it's bad, it has been bad. So they were facing those problems. So in a bit of those problems, they use the negative model. They would think of problem solving, every day problem solving. And it became so powerful. 
it became powerful. Uh, one, why the deficit model is powerful is the result of two great personalities. One of them is called Descartes. Descartes is a French philosopher. And the other one is somebody we know called Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton is a, phys is a physician, a physicist. Physicist. The other guy is Descartes is a philosopher. One thing we should learn today is all the disciplines that we have on earth derive from these two. They derive from either physics or from philosophy. The mathematics you teach at primary school or secondary derives from one of these. They are very powerful mega disciplines. Now Descartes says, Descartes says, there is a mind which is pure and rational, but there is a body which is weak, a problem, a hindrance to the truth seeking mind. The mind tells you, please, Francis, go for a grade three teacher's upgrading. The body tells, no, you cannot go. That is the cut. And many times we follow what the body tells us. Newton, on the other hand, is, was, a, was, was a, 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 a physicist, like we said. He was sitting. This is a story, but I don't know whether it is true or not. Don't mind about the truth of the story. Mind about the message behind the story that Newton was seated under an apple tree. And he saw the apple drop from up to down. Then ask himself, why does this apple fall from up to down and not from down to? Anyway, he said, okay, if that's the case, then objects must fall in a straight line. He threw the apple again in the sky. This time it fell among branches. And then he concluded and said, now this apple has failed to move in a straight line because it has found branches which are obstacles. He did not stop there. He threw the apple again in the, no, before throwing it up, he got a panga and the and, 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 and cut all the, the branches from the apple and he threw the apple again in the air and it fell down, this time in a straight line. He concluded that objects fail to move in a straight line if they find obstacles. Remove the obstacles, then objects will fall in a straight line. That is Newtonian physics. We spend a lot of time trying to remove obstacles and failing to see the opportunities that they are where we are. Newton says true movement is in one direction. Is that right? I don't think. To be diverted is to lose that direction. That is Newton. That is the power of the deficit orientation. This is often created by obstacles on the way to the truth. So look for the obstacle, remove them, and then that's what Makere is doing. That's what even Nkumba is doing. Our PhD thesis, our master's thesis, you have to state the statement of the problem. Why don't we state the statement of That is it. Okay, we are saying, even if we have this, there are better ways of looking at the world. And they want to look at the world in a better way, which is the positive model, the strength-based model. And there is evidence this model following Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the needs we have studied all of us. According to Maslow, people become fired up by higher order needs rather than by lower order needs. When you have that, those of you who have studied that, you, you, you see the, the, the model, the, the, the hierarchical model according to Maslow, physiological needs, security needs, 
estimate and self-actualization. Once you get what you get, then that one does not fire you again. You want to be fired up by something higher than that. When I got my grade two, I said, no, I should become grade three. When I became a senior lecturer, I said, no, it's not enough. Let me become associate professor. I was university secretary the other day, the other week. <laughs> I wish you'd go back to Dar es Salaam for two weeks. <laughs> so you, have, you, you get fired up by the necessity to achieve higher order things. That is according to Maslow. Similarly, even the social, the social exchange theory, those of you who have studied it, I was advised to go slow on these issues, Professor Mandy, but it has come. The social exchange theory, according to Homan's 1958, assumes that social structure is the process of negotiated exchanges between parties. Give me, I do what? Get a PhD, you get more, more, more opportunities. Become associate professor, there are more opportunities. That is a, a, a social structure is a process of negotiated exchanges between parties. These are founded on the assumption that actions will result into commensurate returns. When you do ABCD, the idea is that you will excel and then you get more than what you're supposed to get. Okay, I don't have to take much. That, that was Maslow's hierarchy, you have seen it. Now, there is this thing they call those who, those who, uh, I went down. Positive psychologists, like what I'm studying and what I've decided to do in my life and my career as an academician, discusses the difference between trait making and trait taking. If you want to be a positive psychologist, you have to trait take. What's the difference? I'll give an example. When, when the European missionaries came to Uganda, they found us with our small gods. There was the god of rain. What was his name? Musoke, god Musoke. Eh? There was the god of, of, of hunting. God who? There was, the, there was a god of, of twins. That one has not worked on my side very well. <laughs> the god of twins. So we would go and pray to those gods and get what we are supposed. I'm very sorry, sister. Don't listen. We are, we are doing academic things here, not religious. Ones. <laughs> but this is it. So when the European missionaries came, they said, those are small gods and bad gods. Can you only come and get our God, the only God that we have? And we left. That was making is making a community, an organization, or its people learn new habits, completely new habits, without realizing that they have been in existence. We are saying that one can only do problems to us. The problem orientation tends to make traits instead of taking traits. Taking traits is building on the existing traits that you find and improving people's lives. Nkumba University has its challenges. Yes, you are new, the university secretary. Please don't come and impose your ideas on Nkumba University. They have their problems, but they have been existing identify what has made Nkuba University tick amidst these challenges. Based on that, and then you can make changes. But when you trade make, instead of trade take, it, it results into reducing the people, the society, an organization, or individual to survival levels. They can only survive. At worst, they go back to come and what they were doing. The missionaries came. We became Christians. 
but who goes to Mama Fina at night? I know to the ones here. <laughs> when you pray to God and pray and pray, and it doesn't come. Then the next day you go to who? So trait making makes a people, a society, or it's the, uh, what the, it, it, it makes you, it reduces that people to survival levels, and at best they turn, at worst, they turn to their, what they were doing formerly. Now, these things have disappeared here, Mr. Leaves. You can help me to, if you can. You know, even when you're a professor, you don't know some of these things. <laughs> so, okay. uh, I would like to say positive psychologists, those who take the positive, the positive mode of thinking, adopt a success orientation. They say real problems never go away. If I am short, I am short. If I'm small, I'm, I, <laughs> I may never grow big. That problem will never go away, but it can be outgrown. That's what positive psychologists say. A typical example, Kipro Teach. You remember Kipro Teach? I hear he was a senior six graduate. He did senior six, no money, nothing. He joined the prison. But Kiprotich realized that he was tall enough, slender. He grew up in the hills of Sebei. They were hills and valleys and hills and valleys. So Kiprotich started running. He practiced running and running and running. Later on, I think in 2002, 2000, we remember in Sydney, Kiprotich got a gold medal. Kiprotich knew that he could not solve some of the problems at hand, which included lack of tuition. But then he had his strength, he had his opportunities, and he therefore capitalized on those strengths and opportunities and won the gold medal in that year. When he came back, I'm told President Museveni sent a motorcade for him here. He drove British up to State House. He was given state dinner. Dr. Dalton, up here. <laughs> he was given state what? Dinner. The following day, Kiprotich was given another motorcade to go and address parliament. He addressed parliament. Me, the last time I went, the first time I went to, to, to parliament was when I was head teacher of Safo Lokagwa. I had taken my piece of children to see what, what, what goes on in parliament. And we sat up there. And you can imagine the speaker recognized the students of Sapporo. He did not even know that I, headmaster, was there. <laughs> Said, we have visitors from Sapporo, the children of Sapporo. Can you help? Can you wait? They waved. Headmaster was not asking. <laughs> But Kipro teach a P6 graduate, a senior six graduate, addressed parliament simply because he outgrew his underlying problem. And to do that, you must focus on what you do successfully. I said, what can I do successfully? I can write. I can publish. Are you not listening to me now? Why do I want why do I to <laughs> So identify what you can do and do it successfully. Once you do that, you will outgrow your problem. I have outgrown the issue of being recognized by parliamentarians. Um, I have my people to listen to me. Find what you are doing well, all you can do and move on. Professor Jude, when are you going back to? <laughs> the brain is wired towards the positive. This brain we have does not hear a no. The brain says, it's always the positive. When you say, do not think about an elephant, the first thing the, the brain tells you, 
think about and help us. You young men and men here and ladies, you have had girlfriends and boyfriends. You Nancy, don't, don't listen to this. <laughs> uh, boyfriends and girlfriends, eh? Well, if a boyfriend chucks you, then the, the girl says, ah, I don't want to think about that boy. But what comes next? The next thing you think about is the what? So the brain is wired towards the positive. It does not hear a no. And if you understand the brain does not hear a no, then what do you do? You rephrase your negatives into positives. Banana. You, re you rephrase your negatives into positives. This, this thing is running very fast. I don't know even where I am. Okay, uh, I think that's the slide. Yes, uh -huh. now down. I want to go to the next, that one. Let me tell you a small story, which is true actually. In the Amazonian forest, in Brazil, there are many butterflies. And they say a mere flap of a butterfly in the Amazonian forest can create a storm in Eastern China. A flap of a butterfly can create a storm in Eastern. How? There are millions and trillions of butterflies. When a butterfly flaps its wing like this, it makes some movements in the air. A butterfly, a second one, a tenth one, a millionth one, a trillionth one. And by the end of the day, there is some movement in the atmosphere. And the next thing you hear is a storm in Eastern. So we say small changes made by individuals may be the beginnings of major changes. You don't have to start big. You, have to, you actually have to start small. And you PhD students and statisticians here, there is this issue of a data set which is, which is not normal. When, they, when these people are analyzing their data, they, they, they say, this data set is supposed to be normally distributed. But then they take some tests, they call parametric tests, and they say, yes, I want to see whether this data is normal, is normally distributed. And then they test for skewness and kurtosis. And then they say, yes, this one is negatively skewed or positively skewed. If it is skewed, then you have got to take some tests to make it come normal. If it is cathotic, if your data is cathotic, it can be either liptocatic or platecatic. Then you take a decision and make this data become normal. Others say, no, but I want to see even the homogeneity of variance of this data set those PhDs, and then you test for homogeneity of variance. If the data is homogeneous, then you say there is homoscedasticity. If it is not homogeneous, then you say there is heteroscedasticity. But the idea is that the, not, the data must be normal. We are saying, please, in management and in life, do not test for, do not bring the data to normal. A small change in a society can create bigger changes. In 1980, after the elections, 27 men were not satisfied with the elections. They went with one gun. Where did they go? I don't know. They went to Luero. Look at that place. Five years later, they took over the government of Uganda. 27 men with how many guns? One. Small changes made by individuals may be the beginning of major changes. That small change, that day when my late grandfather, Beswe Morondo, took me to Busubi's Teachers College, I forgot to tell you Busubi's Teachers College. It was called Busubi's TTC. TTC, we had a secondary school near us there. Busubi's Secondary School. So they abbreviated the TTC, TTC for Tata Talina Sente. 
That's what they called us. Hey. Eyes. I have only 10 minutes. I don't know that. I was enjoying my class now. You see. <laughs> what I see. Okay. I can, I can actually. So, uh, but that, that, mere, that mere step of taking to great, a great two teachers college was a stepping stone that has made me reach this far. And God bless him wherever he is. Um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, um, let me skip some of these things. Positive psychologists say that reality is what you focus on. Uh, focus on reality. Uh, it's not, I wanted this one. I would like us to look at, first of all, the resources that we should treasure if we are positive psychologists. There is what we call quality interaction. Quality interaction is the only resource in a low resource organization. Still, I have my example. As head teacher in Sapporo Kabwa, I pride myself in being that school. This director said, can you go and get an MBA? I said, yes, I want that MBA. Now I went, paid for my tuition, first semester, second semester, I, second semester I did not have tuition. This director was going to get another, a fourth school. It's called Winston Academy. So they charged me to be the person in, to head the task force to get that school. One evening when he came back, I told him, director, you know, we are going to get children in that school. In three years, we shall have gotten our money we put in. As if I also put in mind, but we should have got it, our money that we put in that school. Then he asked him for a number of questions, how we are going to do it, blah, blah, blah. But you know, I had my problem with, of tuition. I had not paid tuition for semester two. Then somehow I started moving. But as I was moving, I was moving back, trying to tell him something, but not, not, I did not have the guts to tell him that, please, I don't have the tuition. Then I think he realized that something was not right and told me, Francis, what is the problem? I said, ah, let me tell him. I said, director, I don't have tuition for semester two, year one, MBA. Then he said, do you want me to lend you or to, to give you? What would you have done? <laughs> I told him, please give me. <laughs> How much? I said 1,115,000, 1 1.15,000, 1 1.15 M. Then said, I will send you my finance officer. In the evening, he sent the finance officer who told me, I am giving you, the director is giving you 1.5 million. I had asked for how much? 1.15. He gave me 1.5. Now my mind started running and saying now, this is 350, eh? the balance. I would buy uh, perfume for. <laughs> I buy, and then I would get some 50,000 to go to the Kafunda. In Chengera, they are, they are where men meet. Eh? <laughs> I, I planned for my 350. Guess what? This finance officer tells me now, the director says, give him the name uh, of the movie's account so that he writes a check. <laughs> I was very annoyed. How could, <laughs> could he now come and... But all the same, uh, this man helped me in the second, in the first semester of, semester of year two. But what am I saying? This director saw that something was wrong with me and he became compassionate in compassion there's what we call organizational compassion in organizational compassion somebody identifies the, the, the you, you can realize that there is, there is something wrong there is or, or there is uh, organizational uh, what, what am i i'm forgetting uh, Feeling you feel, he felt like he identified that I was, I was I was having a problem. Then he felt it himself. 
then he helped. He responded and gave me the money. So we are saying, once you have quality interaction, this director gave me money because we had quality interaction. I was telling him good business and he saw that I needed some money. That is what we have interaction in a low resourced organization. I was given 10 minutes. I cannot finish what I present. I, I prepared to present, but let me wind up like this. I would like us all to take a paradigm shift. Where is my paradigm shift? That one. We have been thinking in terms of SWOT analysis. SWOT, strength, opportunities, eh? strength, weaknesses, and opportunities and threats. That is a negative model. We are saying let's transcend from thinking in terms of the negative model and now go positive. The positive one is soaring. Can we soar? Soar has to do with strength, opportunities, aspirations, and results. If we do that, we shall be able to transcend from all those barriers that prevent us from attaining whatever we want to attain. I want to thank you for listening to me. Thank you so much. Another big round of applause for Professor. Thank you so much, Professor, for that wonderful presentation and insights. Also into your life, we are really grateful uh, that you have presented that lecture. I'm so sure that academians, but also those who are not in the academic world have learned a lot from the presentation. Let us add him a round of applause. <laughs> Professor, you have mentioned a number of things. I want to highlight only two or three. You did mention that uh, the number of obstacles all over the world, and we have to work with them because they cannot go away. You, 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 you ably presented and said that what the body uh, doesn't like and go with the mind. We have to remove the obstacles and understand that the truth is the way to go. The strength-based model is your model and you highly say that uh, learning new habits is the only way to go and then to deal with the, the organizational uh, challenges. Building on the existing trends is very important and making improvements in the new traits that you want to bring into the organization. Team outgrown, you did mention, but cannot go away. Find a way you can deal with them and that negatives can only turn into positives with the small changes that you create and that those can create big impact in an organization, but also for individuals. That we have to shift from the sort analysis and move uh, to the other one, which is very important. And um, it represses the threats with aspirations and results. Thank you so much. Thanks. Members, we have had a, a lot of academic presentation. I know that I am going to usher in Mr. Bukasa here to discuss the paper. But before that, allow me to present and introduce you our very own student here to come and give us a music interview. And that is none other than Catherine Kusasira. You are welcome, Catherine. Thank you, Professor. DJ, please. In the interest of time, give me Kathari. Thank you. 
We have so many lines wrong by the time I don't have the time to do this on the day. I want to usher in uh, Mr. Pasa, but Professor wants to do this one person. Just one person I, I forgot to introduce. Ms. Rosinanta. Next time. Uh, Rose, Rose is the general manager of the Saparokawa schools. But one thing about her is that she was my student at MBA. I was her That's my student. Yes. For every academic paper, 
we present and they discuss it. Mr. Mukasa Patrick is a seasoned teacher and a businessman. He also attained a Broad II certificate from the Busubuzi Teachers Training College. He later um, acquired a Grade Three teacher certificate from Rakai Teachers College and a diploma in education from Chambogo University. Mr. Patrick holds a bachelor's degree of education from Makerere University. Mr. Patrick has, is a classroom teacher, like the colleague. He is a director of studies and is a head teacher and also a deputy head teacher. At, at the moment, Mr. Patrick is a proprietor of several schools, namely Machin the Junior School, Victoria Mutunde Primary School, Golden Junior School Kawala, Kampara Prime Junior School, Gudu de Juba, Southern Sudan. Patrick is a proprietor also of the renowned Prime Education Consult, a company that produces and supplies education related materials in primary schools in the whole of Uganda and beyond. Note, all the students who completed studies at Busubu's Teachers College call themselves the Hebrews. The Hebrew is the term in the Bible that means crossing over. Indeed, given the above short CV, Mr. Patrick Mokasa has crossed over. Please join me in welcoming the Hebrew Patrick Mokasa as he congratulates his fellow Hebrew, Professor Kasekende Francis. You're welcome, Mr. Francis. So Mr. Mukasa is not going to, in the interest of time, discuss, but he's going to make uh, congratulatory messages to his fellow Hebrew. The chief guest, protocol observed, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I have to make clarity at the very beginning. I can I have to make clarity at the very beginning because I'm not going to discuss what Professor Kaseki has presented. I've been seated next to Professor Rowler, and I just told her, since I'm a Catholic, I'll use this. A seminary and cannot discuss was what a bishop was presented. <laughs> So I cannot endanger myself <laughs> as a seminarian to discuss what the bishop has presented. My duty is to congratulate Professor Kasekende. With the pride and the humility, I stand here to represent a section of people who call ourselves the Hebrews. The Hebrews are teachers and various professionals, men and women, who got the privilege to study from Busubizi Teacher Training College, as it was called then before it became Busubi's Teachers College. I think it was called teacher training because then we joined from primary seven and we didn't have any experience in teaching. So we did not have to be taught to be teachers. 
we had to be trained. The term Hebrews was chosen by our predecessors to inspire ourselves to cross over from nothingness, absolute poverty, total lack of everything except life, from hopelessness to a full life of abundance, usefulness, worth, success, greatness, joy, and fulfillment. Similar to what happened to the Hebrews of Israel when they escaped slavery from Egypt and left for the promised land. I think the term was also chosen to emphasize that the transitional journey wouldn't be straight forward or easy, but bumpy, meandering, needing perseverance and endurance, but ending in joy, happiness, and victory. Professor Kasekende is a Hebrew. On behalf of my fellow Hebrews, I'm here to congratulate you. I congratulate you, Professor Kasekende, a Hebrew, on this very high, very worthy, very fulfilling, fulfilling achievement of becoming a professor, which I think, I stand to be corrected, is the pinnacle of your God-given calling of teaching. Do you have you any other thing you are going for? I don't know. Congratulations, Professor Kasekende. I met Francis in 1982 at Ibusu Visit Church Training College. We are very young men between the age of 13 and 15. We joined with excellent first grades from rural primary schools, from families that wanted us to get the best education, but had no or limited resources. The government sponsored our four years for the grade two teacher training. From then, at an average age of 19 years, we had to take up our education and fend for ourselves. We started independence of working as well as chasing our different dreams. This each of us did his own way. Professor Kasekend, with the, a lot of sobriety and focus, chose academic excellence. A dream he has chased this rank of professor. Congratulations again. <laughs> As we pursued our dreams, I got the privilege of crossing working paths with the Professor Kasekende several as head teachers, as he mentioned in Sapporo Kagwa schools, we worked together and later as administrators at senior levels. I can first describe Francis as humble, intelligent, fair, committed, focused, genuine, true, I'll say humorous, so humorous and highly balanced people and task oriented manager. He is a dependable and a consistent all weather friend. 
is our current chairman of the of a Hebrews Investment Club. We call it TVL. TVL is Tuliwamu Ventures Limited. And the, the members he introduced, Mr. Zua, I request you to stand up. Mr. Semuyaba, uh, uh, Mr. Mubiru John, yes, he's there. Mr. Chibuka Mathias, and one other member that is not here, plus Professor Kasekende, are the proprietors, actually, of Kliwamu Ventures Limited, and he is our chairperson. Francis, ascending from grade two, from a grade two teacher, I don't want to emphasize that from not so much no Nibusuju Sabu County of Uganda, the university professor is the clearest definition of a Hebrew. You have defined it and described it and lived it. We join you to celebrate this success. Living our dreams is the most practical way of inspiring others. It's the loudest way of saying it is possible. And it is the sweetest whisper we can ever make to anyone. Thank you for raising the bar for the Hebrews. Thank you for inspiring all of us. Thank you for inspiring friends. Thank you for inspiring family. Thank you for inspiring the community that meets you. <clears throat> Thank you for inviting us, the Hebrews, to this inaugural lecture. We are privileged and proud to be friends with you. We have taken our lessons, noted among them the concept of positivity. We shall make our clear statements of opportunities and work to excel on them. We thank everyone. We, the Hebrews, I mean, who have helped in the journey as you navigated to your dreams. We thank everyone who has been of help to Professor Kasekende on his path to this previous prestigious achievement. We thank Nkumba University for every support and I congratulate you Nkumba University for this achievement. We the Hebrews again thank Professor Kasekende's family. We know it very well. We know the family very well and we know the environment you have put in place for Professor Kaseken to succeed. Madam and family, thank you very much. And we thank everybody who has been around, who has worked with the professor as he wandered around the Sinai Desert to his promised land. Finally, Prof Professor, we dedicate you, as always, into God's mighty hand. You are aware that water doesn't get thirsty. It needs the thirsty to have value. Food does not get hungry. It needs the hungry to satisfy in order to have its value. Therefore, may the good Lord use you to educate, to teach, to skill, to be emulated, to empower, and to promote and better lives so that your value increases every day. With the Hebrews, 
wish you marvelous and a great service as a professor. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, the Ibru. A round of applause to the Ibru for congratulating another Ibru. Now, how can someone join the Ibru? You have to first go to Musumbu Zimbabwe, then we are finished. Members, another round of applause for Mr. Makasa for that profile and the historical journey they have moved with the, the professor. As we are about to uh, come to the end, members, now allow me with great honor to invite the guest of honor to give his speech. You're welcome, sir. The Mugore, um, the Hebrew <laughs> uh, Professor Francis Kasekende. Uh, before I give the speech from the guest of honor, I also make a clarification that the guest of honor who was invited to be here was the executive director of National Council for Education, but she couldn't because of competing. Uh, engagement to come and ask me to come and uh, by default i have been named the guest of honor but i am representing the guest of honor and uh, it's a joy certainly to be here and uh, i think the question which the mc asked is very important how does one become a hebrew because in the bible there were hebrews there but also there were god fearing people who circumcised who were gentiles they would circumcise and observe all the laws of the Hebrews and also join and, and also enjoy the fellowship of the Hebrews. So maybe at one time we would uh, open up so that you can have other, other people to come and enjoy that privilege of being a Hebrew. And there are many more there uh, who took the trend that we have taken. And actually the speaker who is not talking to you also started as a great teacher. Now allow me to give the address of the guest of honor uh, as given to me. Uh, the chairperson and members of the foundation body, Nkumba University. The chairperson and members of the board of trustees, Nkumba University. The chairperson and member of University Council, the Kumba University, the Vice Chancellor, the Mugore, the Professor Francis Kasekende, and members of management and staff of Kumba University. Uh, of course, without forgetting the former Vice Chancellor, Professor Mande, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. I would also like to bring warm greetings to you from National Council for Higher Education. The National Council for Higher Education is a statutory body established by Act of Parliament through the Universities and Other Institutions Act 2001 as amended in 2003 and 2006. And it is mandated to regulate, guide, the establishment and management of higher education of learning and also equating qualifications, as well as advising government on issues of higher education in Uganda. I'm happy to learn that this afternoon, you are witnessing Professor Kasekende Francis, PhD, giving his inaugural portfolio lecture, which is a well-established practice in the academia. We celebrate the confinement of the title of Professor, Professor Kasekende as a landmark 
for research, innovations, and teaching. I take the opportunity to congratulate you, Professor Kasekendi, on reaching to this landmark in the teaching profession. I'm aware of the rigor that one undergoes in the pursuit of the highest level in the teaching profession, that is of being a professor. There is no doubt that you must have a PhD as the minimum academic qualification. Certainly, I'm aware that you must have put in a lot of intellectual effort, first becoming a senior lecturer, then an associate professor, and finally now a full professor. I know for sure that balancing teaching and the course of administration, which you have been doing as a university secretary, and then publishing is not an easy task. You must have done all these, Professor Kasekendi, and I'm glad that you have done them so successfully. I therefore profoundly congratulate you on your undertaking and also on balancing and hence achieving this status of professor. National Council for Education has guidelines that show clearly the minimum academic requirement for academic staff at all levels of assistant lecturer, lecturer, senior lecturer, associate professor, and also professor, and also requirements for academic staff who teach at university, whose minimum should be, if it is to be a lecturer, a PhD. Progression in terms of professorship, such as from senior lecturer to associate professor and finest full professor is of great importance to National Council for Higher Education as a regulatory body, because it's a symbol of quality in higher education. This achievement, therefore, to you, Professor Kasekendi, adds another positive milestone, not only to the achievement of Kumba University, but also to those of the National Council for Higher Education. We hence thank so much Kumba University for providing room for academic progression. Turning to the theme of the day, which we have every handled, that is, transcending barriers to academic and professional excellence, leveraging strength-based approaches is a very encouraging topic. It is evident that most people experience barriers in pursuit of their careers, be in education, in business, and other spheres. Some people transcend these barriers, but others fail. Success depends on one's ability to take advantage of the strengths and opportunities around oneself as, as you have every illustrated to us this afternoon. Your lecture this afternoon, therefore, is an eye-opener to all of us. From now onwards, it is instructive to learn that excellence comes through negating the problems that issue as we pursue our business, our careers, but also focusing mainly on the strengths and opportunities they are in, which, is, which matters most. In your lecture, Professor Kasekende, you spelled out clearly that the most progressive way of thinking and looking at issues, particularly if one wants to excel amidst challenges, is to concentrate on strengths and opportunities and not to be bothered with problems. You have ever told us, avoid taking lots of time on those issues that impede us from achieving our excellency, but to capitalize on the strengths and the opportunities at our disposal. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to move away from using the problem-solving model as 
deployed by Professor Kasekendo so that we concentrate on the strength based model. The main question is not about the problem, but the solution. I'm certain that Professor Kasekendo's lecture has provided a new way of, think, of, of thinking and also a new way of how things should be done in order for one to excel, whether in academic, in academia, business, or other spheres. I also assume that the publication you have made able to emphasize the significance that the research of research and its implications for the disciplines of human resource management, organizational behavior, and organizational development where you profess. We commend you on your current and future research directions towards this critical area of study about the management of society. I'm happy to learn from the chairperson of Council of Nkumba University that the Council has a human resource policy that encourages progression of staff from one level to the other in the academia. This is great and is in line with the aspirations of National Council for Education. <clears throat> from the experience that we get from elsewhere when we are monitoring other universities, quite few universities are doing this. They have this policy of staff development and staff progression. So we are grateful as National Council to Nkumba University Board of Trustees and also Nkumba University Board of Directors and Nkumba University Council for having this useful policy. I would like to call on all the academic staff who don't have PhDs but want to make their career in higher education to get on to it and complete their PhDs within time. The fruits of a PhD in the academia, particularly in higher education, are immense, whether here at Nkumba University or elsewhere at any other institution of higher learning now or in the future. With a PhD, you will never regret. This is, these are my words, whether you are a Hebrew <laughs> or not a Hebrew. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to end here, but once again, to commend you, uh, Professor Francis Kasekende, for the instructive professional lecture and also for the development that you have made in the academia. I employ you to use the skills you have acquired in your endeavor to scoop this professorship to develop Nkumba University, in particular, to develop yourself and also to develop the country of Uganda at large. To Nkumba University chairperson, to Nkumba University chairperson of the foundation body, the chairperson of board of directors, to the chairperson of the university council, and to you, the vice chancellor and staff and management of Nkumba University, I say thank you to you all. The National Council for Higher Education Vision is a Uganda with accessible quality and transformative higher education. Thank you for listening to me. Professor Mary J. Okoko, Executive Director, National Council for Education. Thank you so much, guest of honor. But as you are aware, I am too small to thank you, the guest of honor. Because there is a likely Hebrew also. It's the, it's the Dean of Business Administration, 
Dr. Bachmans, please, you're welcome to give a vote of thanks to the guest of honor. Um, thank you for making me one of the Hebrews. It's not nice um, to stand in between the next item on the agenda. Um, if you look to my left, you see a very well-decorated table there. But allow me to propose a vote of thanks. Our chief guest, the chairperson and members of the founding body, the chairperson and members of the board of trustees, the chairperson of council, and the members present, the vice chancellor, the university secretary, our full professor, your dear wife, Mrs. Kasekende, and all the loved ones, brothers, sisters, our most valued and invited guests, and even colleagues, members of Senate, our respected professors at the university here, doctors and the lecturing staff. Ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. Good evening. I want to start by appreciating the presence of our chief guest, who said it was by default, but I think that you stand firm in the shoes of the executive director. Your presence here is really an assurance to the university, to Kumba University, as partners in education. Thank you. Let me start by thanking Professor Francis Kasekend for allowing us to accompany him on his journey, which he started off as a grade two teacher. And ending up this evening as a fine scholar, academic, showing us this evening the amount of research, experience, and work done in his area of organizational behavior and development. Indeed, you have become an authority, and I emphasize indeed an authority, for you are able to traverse simplicity to complexity and back. And I'm certain that everybody who sat here got to understand exactly what Professor Kasekendo was talking about. For me, it became difficult to differentiate his life and his profession. As School of Business and the entire university, we are delighted and welcome you to the cohort of professors at Nkumba University and beyond. To the family and all the loved ones, we applaud the love and care because many times as academics, and especially for a professor, and with the kind of responsibilities that he has, especially research and more of that, a lot of family time is eaten or taken away. And he rightly said, I think he was supposed to be in Australia, 
but chose family first because of the support you give him. We thank you for taking good care of him and also for being present here at the celebration of his induction to full professorship. To the chairperson and members of the founding body, the chairperson of the board of trustees and members, thank you for gracing this occasion with your precious time. Your presence here reassures the university community of your commitment to the vision. Thank you so much. To the vice chancellor and members of Senate, thank you for creating an enabling environment for good scholarship. We trust that with your leadership, that Nkumba University will continually ascend the ranks and be counted as the best university for constructive scholarly engagement and learning, research and community development. Thank you so much. To the university staff, our respected professors, the lecturing team, thank you for being present and active and in support of our own professor, Francis Kaseken. Such promotions, presentations, and lectures, our business, and worthy of inculcating in our university culture. Thank you. And last but not least, wish to thank our administration led by the academic registrar, his office, and the organizers of this academic event, to our support staff. Without you, such a conducive environment would not have been realized. Your very humble contributions and hard work are really appreciated. And to our visitors, the well-wishers and friends of Nkumba, the student body, thank you for taking time out to be at this event for welcoming and congratulating Professor Kasekende on his elevation to full professorship. We wish you all the best of the evening, of the weekend, and pray that you return home safely to your respective destinations, and also continue to ponder on the highlights of this inaugural lecture. Ebola is out there. Please take care. We thank you for all for being here and for this being such a wonderful audience. I owe you. Thank you. Thank you so much, upcoming Ibru. Indeed, you have done us a great job for passing on that vote of thanks. There are two items left here. But first, Professor, a team from St. Apollo. No, not St. Apollo. Sir Apollo. I know St. Apollo is near here. Sir Apollo, uh, I've got something to appreciate you and congratulate you. Please, you're welcome. Sir Apollo Kagwa Schools. Please, you're welcome with your presence to the Professor. Very fast. The interest. And uh, also, This is the team of our standard professor. These are the ones that started the professor. Three hundred thousand salary. <laughs> he became mad. <laughs> my student, your master student. Ah. You, my PhD student. Where are you? Do you know the data set we are using? 
<laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Please, you can hand over. You want to say one word? Maybe one. Our chief guests, uh, all protocol observed. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are here to represent Mr. Sewava Musa, who was unable to come because of, but he desired a lot to be part of this celebration. Uh, Professor, we are very happy and we want to thank God for this achievement. As Sapo Lokagua schools, you have made us proud. Because generations for him and generations we shall always look on the world our former staff because he has achieved it all. So I want to thank you so much for taking the advice of Mr. Sewava and also making Mr. Senkoto proud that you are now the head of the institution of <laughs> yes. So he promised and he has achieved it. It's all hard work. Uh, Mr. Sewava said us a small gift in honor of your achievement. And we want to hand it over to you. We also wish to thank Mrs. Chiravira Kathy for supporting you in this journey. So with me, you see we are in school and we've had a chance to be in this inspire and aspire to be as for I should introduce some of our people. Uh, next to me is Madam Senior Compliance, she's called Mrs. Mugabe Christine. We have Mr. Kagwa, he's the registrar of our organization. Everything to do with examinations, Kalishula is in charge. We have Mr. Senkoto Fred, he's in charge of human resource. What we have learned today, we are going to put it in practice. We have Madam Kathy Nachaze, he's the overall in charge administrator of our academic programs. He's technical, but the administration part of it, she's in charge. We have Sheikh Hamza Saidi, he's in charge of our theology, the religious affairs of our Muslim children in the organization. Then we have Haji Abib Namaka Joe, he's the assistant director of the organization. So as we mentor, they also, the, the directors also mentor, that is in line of succession planning. So I want to thank you so much for the opportunity and the organization. May God bless you all and bless our professor for the achievement that he has added on our organization. Thank you so much. I now present the present. I see the Ibu calling the assistant Ibu. <laughs> Come and receive it. Ah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sabo Kabwaskos. Members, I have for just one item left on the agenda, but uh, we have here, I want to recognize two people. I have the president of the Alumni Association. Is here, His Excellency, and the, and the Vice is here also. But the Vice should come here because the Vice is also uh, Vice. You're welcome. The Vice President of Alumina. Who is the Vice? Okay, Representative of Alumina. Please, is here. And Representative of Alumina to Council. You come, Madam. Also, come with him. 
and a monitor. And uh, they have one word for you. The monitor has one word for you in one minute. Come, alumni, please. We, in the interest of time, then now we shall go to the cake cutting, which is the last item. Again. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. All protocol observed. Uh, on behalf of the alumni of Nkumba University, would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the new professor on the block in Nkumba University, Professor Francis Kasekende. Congratulations. And on behalf of the alumni, uh, my, my, myself and the president here and the vice president, we are your students. And uh, we've had the privilege to be lectured or to learn from you quite a number of things in, in regards to uh, achieving a doctor in philosophy and we are in that journey. And so we are glad that you are one of our mentors alongside the other professors uh, in the house and the doctors. And so uh, given your story and your journey, I can only assure my colleagues who are doing uh, their PhDs that there is hope. There is hope and so we keep the momentum that has been passed on to us by Professor Kasekende. The story is encouraging, it's inspiring and uh, we can only assure you, Prof, that we shall, we've learned a lot from your journey and indeed, we shall keep on until we graduate and get our doctorate in uh, philosophy. So thank you. Thank you very much. I will now take this opportunity to allow the president to say something. <laughs> thank you. Yeah? OK. OK, thank you. They say that they entrusted me to speak on their behalf. Thank you. Uh, the excellencies for accepting me. Ladies and gentlemen, please have a good evening. Thank you. you know, when we empower women and they refuse. <laughs> Members, allow me to introduce one very important person who taught almost everyone here, Professor Sekamon. We are taught by Professor Sekamon. We are taught by a person who was taught by Professor Sekamon. He taught the Hebrew. Ah, you see, Professor Sekamon, thank you for, and, and also for the resilience and, 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 the, and the picture you send out there for Kumba University. Thank you so much for the resilience. He came here, number one. Professor came here, number one. Ah, he also taught Dr. Darlington. The chairperson of council. I thought they are, I mean, they, they, this gentleman is just a living testimony. He's a, he's a living encyclopedia. I don't know what Nkumba will do, but he's number one on the Hall of Fame for Nkumba University. Professor, thank you so much. Members, now allow me to go to the second last item of the agenda, and this is the cutting of the cake. And I want to invite the guest of honor, uh, a Professor, also the table of the guest of honor, Vice Chancellor, Professor Mande, Chairperson Council, and uh, Professor Kasekende, the family of Professor Kasekende, um, um, members of the foundation body, and BOT to come behind the cake and uh, do the needful. Welcome. Good 
Because we shall not have any other opportunity. And it is this journey, students, you can move away. Thank you so much. PhD students, some of them are my bosses. <laughs> So our schools is one missing, but I think if you give us some of our schools. We shall uh, down there on level two, where we are going to have our dinner. We don't have uh, public address, but we want to send a prayer to the meal, the, 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 the prayer for the needs and the father lifts the place. Let me request the sister. Father is there. Father is there. Father is there. Oh, okay. We have another father. Okay, before the prayer of Father Thomas, so Professor, I told the Professor she has. So, professor Jude, Professor Vice Chancellor. So I saw a nice man, Professor Lach. And uh, Professor Dino. <clears throat> professor, professor, second. Professor. Oh. If 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 we did history, of course we must have done history somewhere. Let's take up our books. We are all over. Just take up. Some people find me and ask me whether it's uh, this is a young auto password. Is it still here? Huh? Professor, what is the bit? Thank you so much, professors. Okay, Father, please say my prayer. This moment to thank the Lord who has taken us through this important occasion where we have seen one of us excelling, attaining a level where we should all aspire to be. God our Father, we thank you for this occasion. We thank you for all the lessons that you have taken, and we thank you that you have blessed these momentous 
gathering and arranging your classes. We ask you to bless the meals that have been prepared for us. We pray that the strength that we shall gain from what you are going to partake of may help us to continue on our journey, especially as we defeat the barriers to achievement and acquire the positive and a wonderful memory of what is possible and positive so that you may attain our goals. Make our prayer to us all. Thank you so much. I tell you, please join us on level two for the dinner. Also, I tell you here, please join us on level two as well as here. Thereafter, Please don't leave uh, because the deal is now Professor Alcanes for you. So, please, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 